Welcome to this webinar on trading multiple time frames. I'm sure you're going to uh, enjoy it a lot. My name is Chris Forsick and I welcome uh, Tarantula as well. Yep, my name is Dennett, nicknamed Tarantula. Hello everyone. Let's do this today. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty. So, let's move on. We'll quickly take a look at um, some introduction slides and then move on to our topic as usual. And, um, you know, after the webinar, we definitely encourage you to take a look at the website and uh, do a bit of discovery with regard to the Admiral Markets website. There are a lot of things, for example, analysis as well, by the way, uh, regarding uh, technical analysis, Tarantula's articles, and wave analysis, and, you know, take a look at the great spreads as well. Definitely worth it. But as always, just a risk disclaimer warning stating that global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Uh, for example, you could seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And uh, this webinar and video is for educational purposes only. So we thank you for your attention on that one. And now we're going to take a look at uh, what our agenda is today. So as, as we introduced already, it's multiple time frame analysis. And I think that's, that's really, I, I like the topic a lot. It's um, something I do almost automatically, but um, I think it is, uh, has certain confusion maybe elements to it. So it would be great to look at what, what is, first of all, multiple time frame analysis. And then we'll you know, dive into the benefits, dangers, and how it can be used. And uh, Toronto, you're going to show some interesting strategies I saw. So, I think it's yeah, there are a few interesting strategies that can be used as a multiple time frame analysis. But those are only, how can I say, basic to intermediate strategies, because real multiple time frame uh, strategies are really, really require a lot of knowledge. But also those strategies that we will show can be used effectively to make profits. Absolutely, absolutely. Does anyone, I hope, just checking with the audience, when Toronto is talking, does anyone hear the echo through my mic? Because somehow, I hope not. If so, let me know. Otherwise, I'll assume it's okay. Okay, great. It's okay. That's good. So, uh, well, just, to, you know, kind of logical, but still, um, basically, of course, you can either look at one time frame for all your decisions, right? regarding um, analysis, entries, stop loss, take profits, trade management, tools, indicators. You can, you could, in theory, you could use only one time frame for all those decisions. But of course, the opposite would be then that you use multiple time frame analysis uh, for splitting that, those tasks among time frames. For example, making the entry on one hour and the analysis on four, and multiple could be already two, could be three, could be eight, I guess, nine, maybe it's the max, I don't know, I never counted. But, uh, so that would be the difference, of course, just a quick explanation on that one. But uh, Toronto will dive into more details here. Yeah, what is multiple time frame analysis? So most of you guys know that I, when I do analysis early in the morning and when I post on Forex Factory and other sites, including Admiral Markets blog and Admiral Markets, uh, Facebook page, you know that I usually use multiple time frame analysis and I say uh, it can be good to enter around that level or that zone with stops there, with target prices around there. So I always, always exclusively use a multiple time frame analysis when I do my early, early analysis in the morning. So it's exclusively multiple time frame analysis. I never do analysis on any single time frame as because that is because I also don't trade on a single time frame. When I when I do my trading, I always always take into account higher time frames, and I I will explain that later. It, we I use top down analysis to determine the entry, but it's always good to know what higher time frames look like and what we should base our trades on because it's very it's very important. Uh, we will show you that today. So multiple time frame analysis involves monitoring the same currency pair across different time frames. So let's say 
for for example that we that we use a five minute entry on five minute entry we cannot see anything we cannot see anything so we need we 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 can only see a potential entry but we don't know what trend is because five minute you know there are basically there are twelve five minute candles on one hour time frame so it can be really how can I say haphazardous to 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 gamble so we determine the trend and then we go with top down analysis to determine our entry so that is multiple time frame analysis let's get to top down analysis and then uh, use a small time frame to en for entry uh, we usually use three different periods for intraday so th those periods are usually h4 h1 and 15 minute time frame there are slight variations with h1 uh, h4 h1 and 5 minute time frame when I use, I monitor. When I uh, trade, I usually monitor uh, momentum. So, if there is a momentum on one hour time frame, I will use, for example, uh, 15 or five minute entry uh, for five minute time frame for entry. I heavily use MACD, MACD, sorry, MACD, and I really, I really prefer to see if there is a sort of divergence or if there is a sort, a sort of bounce of the important level or break of important level and I really I really prefer to go with the trend on, on uh, various time frames so four, uh, four hour time frame one hour time frame and 15 or five minutes for entries we usually start with longer time frame then we break down our, our analysis to shorter time frame so that should mean four hour one hour then 15 minutes or four hour or one hour and five minutes. So those are those are usual usual combinations of uh, time frames uh, which we use for determining uh, trend and uh, entries. So why uh, why should we use that? Because we need to have a bird's eye view. So using multiple multiple time frames resolves contradictions between indicators and time frames. So always begin your market analysis by stepping back from the markets and looking at the big picture. So always do that. Uh, there are possible two possible trading styles. So top down analysis with entry on lower time frame and classical analysis and trading on preferred time frame usually within two time frames. That means that we use our analysis for example on four hour time frame and then we solidly trade one hour time frame with top of the hour entries or exits. So my preferred method is top-down analysis. I break down into smaller fragments, and when I spot that the momentum has been lost, I then enter the market. So it's it's really uh, because we need retracement if we go for trend trades. So that is why I today I wrote that we should uh, take into account uh, entry between 28.85 and 3.00 on euro or uh, dollar. But as you could see, there were some nice rejections of the 2985. There were excellent rejections, uh, uh, which uh, drove the, tie, uh, the pair to 29, 29 uh, uh, 20. But today we had also uh, ADP, which is a bit risky. So there may be a new trend forming on four hour. We will see uh, when when daily time frame closes. So there is an introduction. Why? multiple time frame analysis that is the best analysis for me that is the best analysis in all forex markets i always do that and exclusively i do that absolutely i i do nothing else but uh but multiple time frame analysis and we'll dive into uh actually it's, i think we can move on maybe to looking at those advantages right of uh of using that and uh I, I definitely agree with Tanantala. There's a lot of advantages and a lot of restrictions, a lot of advantage of multi time frames and a lot of restrictions regarding the single time frames. Now, there could be, you know, some some plus points here on the single time frames TFs, um, but um, there may be only for I would say traders that just started out, maybe just maybe because. Then it could be a bit tricky and confuse, confusing, for example, uh, to to look at uh, you know a couple of time frames um, in a way. 
So that is something that could be gradually expanded as the experience level and the learning curve goes up, for example, might. Um, it, you know, it could have that disadvantage of being confused, confusing. Uh, it, it does give you the advantage of ex extensively learning one particular time frame uh, for, for a period of time. So it's like a good starting warming up method in a way. But if you already passed, you think, the, I would say, the uh, beginning phase of your Forex career, then I definitely would advise to move into quickly into multi-time frame analysis. And um, you know, there is always that hazard of zooming in too much, but that's something we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, definitely um, could be dangerous. We'll go into that a bit later. The advantages are way, uh, you know, outweigh the disadvantages, in my opinion, a lot. And Tarantula too. So they give you, first of all, that opportunity to see the bigger picture, which means that you have the ability to see if there's a trend, first of all, and identify the trend in which direction it is, to see the, the key levels on uh, different time frames, um, to actually make a better trade plan as well with regard to the take profit, stop loss, management of the trades. Uh, confluences between different time frames and different tools on different time frames that uh, give a likelihood of an indication of uh, of a bigger bounce, you know, or continuation. So I I understand my sound is disconnecting sometimes. I hope it's not too bad. I'm not sure why, to be honest. Uh, hope it's not that bad. Let me know if it is. And um, the trades have a higher rate of success, so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of advantages. Basically, it's really great stuff, and it gives you a uh, a lot of advantages. Let's see, um, you know, there's only one thing definitely I want to talk about is actually the last point here is getting the trading plan mixed up and micromanaging, because that sometimes is viewed as multiple time frame analysis, but that could be very uh, counterproductive. All right, we'll, we'll go into that on this slide. And uh, let's see. Anything else I want to, maybe just a quick note here actually in between is that, for example, if you are starting out and you have one time frame now, you're looking at one time frame, start, I guess, slowly with two and just expand. That would be very, probably you know, the best tip I can give you. And once you're comfortable with three, then slowly expand that, maybe if you want to at least. I mean, as Tantala said, for example, looking at the four hour that I have here too, as an example underneath, four hour, one hour, 50 minute chart, makes a lot of sense as a combination for intraday trading. So that's the same uh, you know, example. You could use, for example, the four hour chart for trend and divergence, and maybe the one hour for chart patterns and fibs, for example, just an example. And the 50 minute chart could be the, tr the trigger, right? But I wanted to di dive into uh, a bit more on the carefulness of zooming in, especially when you're um, using time frame analysis. So there are two things, the red and the blue kind of zones that I wanted to warn you about, all right, um, here and here, basically. Basically, the first one is that you want to be careful with using too many indicators on time and too many time frames combinations. That definitely could lead to paralysis of analysis. And eventually, you definitely want to go to a process of simplifying your trading. Usually, it's the opposite when you just start out. Then you kind of tend to overcombine it maybe halfway. And I think the more experience you get, the more simplified you try to make it, actually. Now, that could lead, you know, once you start adding those time frames, it could uh, make it more complicated, so you have to be careful of that. The second one, the blue area here, is uh, once you take a trade, basically, there is a danger of, you know, of zooming in to see, for example, how the trade is doing there. So if you take it on, if you do your analysis on the day chart, uh, you, you look at the trend on the four-hour chart, and your trigger chart is the one-hour chart, and then you zoom into the 50-minute chart to see how your one-hour trade chart wor is working, that's not, you know, but not the optimal way of looking at multiple time frame analysis, especially for trade management. You know, that would trigger your trading psychology, it would trigger emotions, and it would be quite difficult to stay in that trade because any ups and downs will 
you know, make you doubt about the trade. It will, it will weigh heavily on the psychology. Every 15 minutes, you're making mentally a decision, am I staying in, am I leaving the trade? And if you've done that five times, uh, the chances are high that you're bailing out. Well, actually, only one hour, one candle of your actual time frame trigger chart has passed by. So I, I can, I'm sure you see the sense of being careful of that. There's nothing wrong with maybe zooming in once to, I don't know, to scale in or whatever, but not to keep it on that chart while you took it on the one hour chart. That doesn't make sense. Or for example, actually it could be even better to zoom out one time frame and keep it on that chart so that uh, your psychology doesn't tinker with that trading plan. And zooming out actually would help um, keep focus on the bigger picture and not get too swayed away by the trigger charts ups and downs, basically. So I, for example, use um, four hour for trend, but I do look at the day chart most of the time just to look at the candle, the, the candle itself, and for highs and lows. As you know, if you looked at my you know, daily or the live trading room there with uh, at more markets, then you know that I don't like to go long, right? Like a few pips before a daily high and short few pips below a daily low, for example. So that's what I use on the day chart. I don't trade the day chart, but I do use it for you know that to check that element of it. So that's just an example, I guess, of uh, of that. Then that that information you can use for making your a profit uh, level or using that for your stop loss level and uh, stuff like that, all right? So that's that's all I wanted to say. I think, to be honest, Tenonto is not going to take a look at his strategies. Yes, indeed. Yeah, just to say about multiple, uh, don't get confused, guys, because we won't, uh, for example, get top-down analysis from daily to one minute time frame. Uh, because each daily candle has approximately, I think, uh, 1,441 minute candles. So, for example, when I look at the one-minute chart, I'm often only seeing what would constitute a maximum one candle on the daily chart. So it would be very hazardous to read trends on daily and attempt to place trades on the one-minute chart due to this disconnect. So we don't we don't uh, read the daily time frame just to enter a one-minute time frame. It should have uh, above 1,400 candles, so one-minute candles. So that is very very. Uh, big, big hazard to your account. Uh, also, uh, one of advantages uh, no noise. So, for example, when trading shorter time frames, we are much more dependent on momentary flow action in the market. So, such sporadic moves can undermine our analysis quite easily. So, on higher time frames, this kind of action isn't felt. So, you just use lower time frames to enter the market. But you manage your trades towards support or resistance of one high, higher time frame. So that is the purpose of uh, top-down analysis and uh, multiple time frame trading strategy. So I will show you two strategies which basically uh, depend uh, on a few indicators uh, and are very suitable for novice traders. Uh, advanced uh, metal method of uh, methodology basically of uh, multiple time frame analysis uh, really requires a lot of a lot of information and a lot of a lot of screening time so that is what I I can teach that but that requires a lot of lot of time and it's a separate thing so uh, stick with these strategies and if you want to learn something bigger you can always have all across the internet or if you want some mentor but uh, to be honest it's it's very very it's not th that hard but it's exhausting from time to time it's not easy to do that analysis which I do early in the morning because I take many many uh, things into account before I do my analysis so these are kind of strategies which can really make some good profits and are based on on a multiple time frame so Strategy number one, we use 5 EMA and 11 EMA. So 5 EMA, exponential moving average, 11 EMA are, is another exponential moving average. So what are the moving averages? Moving averages are dynamic levels of support and resistance. 
So those are moving averages. So you use it in conjunction with a stochastic RSI and MACD. So first of all, first of all, uh, yeah, stochastic is 833, RSI is 11, and MACD is standard MACD 12269. So for this kind of strategy, we don't have to use MACD two line or uh, modern MACD. This is traditional MACD with only one line, only one moving average on its form. So we are talking about traditional MACD. So first of all, we take a look on four-hour chart to determine the trend. I will show you later uh, uh, example how to do it on practical example. Uh, then, if bullish trend is in place, we have five EMA, which is above 11 EMA. Stochastics are heading up, and RSI is about 50. In that four-hour time frame, we don't look for MACD. We only look for MACD when we zoom into 15-minute time frame. 15-minute uh, time frame is our trigger chart. So, 5 EMA crosses above 10 EMA, RSI is above 50, and stochastics are heading up, but not above 80. And MACD is going from negative to positive, or negative but increasing. So it doesn't have to be above zero. It can be negative but increasing. Why? Because MACD is a momentum indicator also. MACD is excellent momentum indicator. And when it uh, starts to print, uh, uh, for example, thick histograms, and we have a moving average of MACD above zero, then the momentum is very strong. But also if, for example, is MACD is negative and it's switching and is building, for example, start to build positive histograms, so it, it has increasing, increasing negative bars, that means that momentum is switching from negative to positive and we have an upward momentum. So MACD is, uh, for me, as you already know, it's the best indicator. I uh, I use it very heavily, and in this strategy, it can help. It can help a lot. So uh, we can see uh, on the slide, on the next slide, we can see uh, we can see actual four-hour chart. After this slide, we will show you 15 minutes. This is a setup chart, and uh, 15 minutes is trigger chart. Uh, I have marked with the, with this horizontal uh, red line. Uh, uh, the place for a potential entry. So we have, uh, after this blue 5 EMA reached 11 EMA, that means we are in a consolidation period. And we should, we should always try to search for this consolidation period. How do we know that this is a consolidation? First of all, we know by this moving average. They are usually sitting at the top of each other. So it doesn't matter if green is, is, if red is above blue or blue is above red. It doesn't really mean uh, nothing at all because we need divergence. We need these, these two, make, uh, two moving average to diverge, so to expand. So after that, we know that we are having a trend. So prior to any trend, there is a consolidation period. And this, where this red line is, is a consolidation period. Okay? Then, when we see a consolidation, we wait for the trend to confirm. Confirmation is RSI above 50, stochastic above 20, but it shouldn't be above, it just should be rising. So stochastic should be increasing, rising. So we see that this stochastic has is going to the upside. So we at this particular time frame, MACD is of no, no interest of us. So we don't look for MACD, we just want this three in price action, RSI and stochastic to confirm the trend. In this particular red line cross, we see that trend has been confirmed, and then we can move. 15 minutes time frame. So this is the example for long trade. For a short trade is the same, but vice versa. RSI should be below 50. Stochastic should be decreasing, should be going down. And on 15 minute time frame, you will see MACD should also be decreasing. So this is the example for a long trade and for short trade is vice versa. You're all smart enough to know what to do uh, when 
other trend, other type of trend starts to form in. So, so we can see, uh, we can take a look at another slide. Another slide is 15 minutes time frame. I have also marked, uh, th this is a red line is where we have spotted trend. And now we wait for an entry. So how do we pick up an entry? We have, we need to have uh, on 15 minutes time frame price to touch at least red level or red moving average to place an entry. So we can we can wait for the price to touch or we can wait for the price to touch this blue line. I have marked this entry for example here uh, this is a red line so one two three four candles four candles to the right side of this right red line should be our ideal entry because this candle one two three four candle has touched the red line that is dynamic level of support after the consolidation in uptrend okay so one once more let me define it clearly it's uptrend we had consolidation consolidation period on four hour time frame blue and red start to diverge we have uptrend all indicators confirm uptrend on 15 minutes time frame we wait for the price to touch red a red EMA or at least blue EMA in this particular example four candle to the right of the red line is ideal entry because we have RSI above 50 we also have increasing stochastics they they go they are inclined to go upward as we can see and we also have MACD positive it's above zero and it's sorry, really sorry, deep. sorry. Where's the entry? Our market here, there, there. there? That is That's ideal right. entry. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We wait for a pullback, right? So yeah. we wait for a pullback. So this is ideal entry. Pullback to the red EM, uh, red DMA, which serves as a dynamic support in this case. I don't trade crossovers. I never trade crossovers of moving average. Next example will be crossover of price and the moving average, not crossover of two moving average. So this is just for support or resistance resistance marks. So this is a dynamic support, price has retreated to dynamic support in uptrend and there we wait for an entry. And we can see afterward that price could have reached a maximum 50 pips before falling down to test another good support level. So, so you always take profit at, at predetermined pivot points or support levels or you already know how to take profit. I rarely squeeze the whole move when I trade because lately as you could see uh, market has been a little how weird it doesn't always respect target price levels but I always present maximum maximum target price where price could could go so sometimes it's good to open a trade put a trailing stop and then go go out of, of the house or out of your trading session just not to watch the, that price section because price sections can be hectic and we can uh, close our trades prematurely. So sometimes is the best option. Use training stuff. So we can see that this particular trade head uh, could have given us 50 pips. It's same for for uh, down for short trend. So we need to wait for a price to confirm downtrend. Then we wait for the price of 15 minutes time frame to come to a red level of uh, resistance or blue blue level of resistance or red level of resistance and then we take our trade if RSI is below 50 if stochastics are going down and if MACD is showing negative signs is going uh, is going down or it's building thick thick histograms below zero line so this these are these are examples for this kind of strategy and there is another kind of strategy which I will show you. That is a called uh, strategy number two. 
That, uh, but it, mm -hmm. By the way, there, Kalen is asking if if you mean the RSI is above 50, trend is bullish, right? Of course. Yes. When RSI is above 50, we have a, another so, a source of confirmation that trend is bullish. When RSI is below 50, then trend is bearish. But you should also have you should also take into consideration that stochastics need to go upward, so they should be inclined to go upward, not above 80, but pretty, uh, just reaching to, to 80 level, but shouldn't be overbought, and that is confirmation that trend is bullish. Trend is bearish when RSI is below 50, and also stochastics are going down. And then, uh, of course, and the uh, uh, five and the eleven EMA should uh, diverge to the downside, and then you switch to fifteen minutes entry chart. So that is that is the answer to the question. Is there another question? I can. Uh, uh, yeah. What indicators that right on the graphic stochastic? Yeah, that is stochastic, and that is uh, MACD. But this is traditional MACD. Oh, sorry. No problem, Chris. This Very is stunning. traditional MACD. This is RSI. Below RSI is stochastic, A33 setting. And below stochastic is MACD 12.26.9. Standard MACD built into MT4 platform. You hear it on other market uh, method trader for. You hear it uh, pre-installed. And then we go to strategy number two. So we have two indicators. Again, 8 and 34 EMA. Those are good numbers for this kind of strategy. And now you listen to me very carefully because we don't trade make, uh, we don't trade EMA crossovers. We trade price crossovers, not uh, EMA crossovers. So setup chart is one hour time frame. Trigger chart is M5 or M15. Let's say M5 because we use one hour time frame. Then we first analyze the trend by watching the price. If price, I'm talking now about price, not EMAs. If price is above 8 and 34 EMA, the price, the candlesticks. Then I will show you another example. If we zoom into lower time frame and find entry when price cross over 8 EMA. So we for EMAs to cross. We wait for the price to cross EMA. On one hour time frame you have 8 and 34 EMA. On five minute time frame you just have 8 EMA or 15 minutes, doesn't matter. You have only E8 EMA. So when you open when you open your MetaTrader 4 platform you should always get into indicator and then select moving average 34, then visualization. You should uncheck all time frames and you should only check one hour time frame. So you will be sure then uh, when you switch into a lower time frame, the, uh, uh, your chart will show only ADMA on five minute time frame. So we don't use 34 on, on five minutes. So one hour, five minute time frame, we wait for the price to be above 8 and 34 for bullish trend. Of course, for, for bearish trend is vice versa. We would need the price to be below 8 and 34. And then we zoom into lower time frame and find the place when price cross over ADMA. I will show you the slide. I will show this is our setup chart. So as always, we wait for the trend to confirm. Trend is confirmed when first swing is forming, right? When first swing is forming. So this is this is where the price is below eight and below thirty-four EMA, and we wait for the first swing. So then, when we saw that the price is having a retracement and that is below eight and thirty-four, we switch into five minute time frame. For one hour setup uh, we use trigger of trigger chart as five minute time frame. So Chris you can show our as a five minute time frame. So five minute time frame is our next slide. Yes. There is it. 
there it is. There it is. Just right to the red line, there is a first cross of the price to the downside. So this is the zone when price is having a retracement and then, then it retraces above this 8 and we wait the price to swing above and cross, just cross below 8 EMA. So the price has gone above, it, 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 it indicates a retracement and after the swing has been done, this is the swing, mini swing on 5 minute time frame, we wait for the price to cross this 8 EMA. And you see the price has crossed here and you see how nice the price is following the trend. It has gone some, some and I think it's some um, uh, 30, 40 pips to the downside. Then we wait for another swing. We search for entry. We w watch one hour time frame. We can see that the price is still below 8 and 34 and our second entry is after the retracement. So you can see how the price is actually following this dynamic a level of support resistance signalized by 8, 8 EMA. So you can see it's perfectly following it, it doesn't cross, it's just bouncing off, off of it. You see how the price is retracing, bouncing off of it, and then I can mark our second entry, it's where the price has breached this 8 EMA or 5 minute time frame, and after that breach the retracement is over and you see how good a trade could have been. So. That is, uh, I think that is an example from yesterday. So that is really, really awesome way to trade multiple time frames with dynamic levels of support resistance signalized by EMAs. So, so I don't trade crossovers. This is sometimes, or many times I have, I have traded this strategy and it, it is really simple and it is really good because Price when, it, when the price is uh, retracing, you see how it, it follows. It follows perfectly. Follows the ATMA, and then when it breaks through, it goes down. It's funny actually because I didn't recognize it was yesterday, but now I now that you now that you just said so, I, I do recognize it. And the funny thing was, I took it right in here indeed because I put a fib on this this move down. It was a 50 fib right in here. And it was a 50-minute candle that hit that 50-fib uh, here, and it had a bearish close. It looked like a nice retracement. So it moved up just a bit to retrace that candle and sold it about halfway and uh, got this nice down move. So that was, that was, that was nice. And it was funny that, indeed, it's just at the same spot that this five-minute uh, strategy of yours went into effect. That's yeah, basically, nice. it waits for retracement, and then we we just we just need the price to break this this dynamic level of support and resistance. It's it's ADMA, and then when it breaks through it, we should assume that a retracement is done, and we go for a trend. Yeah. Fractal, hook back. Conference, uh, also it's 4th of July. Okay. So the banks uh, will not be working, so there might be some spikes, uh, both to the downside and upside, and I don't think I will trade tomorrow. So one day doesn't mean anything, but it can mean much. So I really don't like to trade when there are bank holidays or when there are some very, very important news such as ECB conference and bid rate announcement. I don't I just don't want to be stuck in a trade. So oh, no. one single day for me it doesn't mean anything really. We don't trade each day. We we need to wait for opportunity to trade. Why should I trade if I don't know where the price will go? We know no, that no, the no, trend no. is bearish. I was, I right. was totally, really only talking about yesterday and had no, no influence on tomorrow, absolutely. No, no, totally. of course, of course. Yeah. I'm just saying that I don't think I won't be trading tomorrow. I just, oh, I don't know. Okay. Maybe I, I will if the price goes to, to test 30.65 or something. I may place a short trade. 
Okay. But you see, this is uh, today. It was a really, really, <laughs> how can I say, hectic day for price action. Twenty nine, twenty, then thirty, forty. No, absolutely. The tomorrow is a very um, all those levels are not respected, and it's it's a very tricky day. Um, we do have some questions, and a Friday too, by the way. Definitely, uh, if there's any days you want to take a day off, like I'm doing, <laughs> definitely Thursday and Friday, I think would be recommendable. That's yeah, Friday is also NFP, right? NFP Friday, then NFP Monday. It will be very. Yeah. So we can go for scalp trades. I I won't trade into today for sure. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So we got some questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, how much time can we wait for the target? Is the very first one actually. How much time should we wait for our target? It depends on time frame. If you if you trade on a one hour time frame, I, I'm talking about uh, setup charts. So setup charts are the, are for determ are the, their purposes for determining a target price, take profit and stop loss. So we should always wait for example at least full hour if we trade one hour time frame. At least we should wait one hour or if the price is very close to our target uh, in that particular hour we should uh, take uh, we should close it just prior to the top of the hour. So basically you can cling on first three hours of each session so you can hold on to your trades and in those particular first three hours of each session. I don't like to carry trades over in the next session or overnight. So I usually trade the first three hours of each session excluding Asia. So it's first three hours of London and three first hours of uh, New York. If the target price hasn't been hit in that particular hour or I can see that the price is bouncing off the level and it can be broken in that particular hour, I will close the trade. Yeah. What was the first thing you said actually regarding two hours for which time frame you would you would use? A five minute uh, no, or, or if we or, no no, it's the first three hours of each session. No, but you mentioned something at the very beginning, uh mm -hmm. regarding like one, two hours for a certain time frame, but I missed was one. No, it was. I think if no, I, I said if we if it if we take our trades on one hour time frame. So our one hour time frame is our setup chart. Then I would like to see the price hit my target level in that particular hour. Okay. If it doesn't, yes. If it doesn't happen, I may wait for another two candles. So it's two hours, but only if it fits in the first three hours of each session trading. Okay. Yeah. Only yeah. if it fits there. For example, if I take the trade. At the third hour of London, so it's 9, 10, 11 a.m., right? If I take that first, uh, my first trade is at 11 a.m., it's the third hour of London session, I would close my trade completely, even if it doesn't hit my target price, just, just prior to the top of the hour. Because I don't like to trade in consolidation period. There is uh, in between 12 and 2.30 p.m. Yeah, no, that's a good tip. That's, that's good stuff indeed, absolutely. Uh, let's see, one more question, a few questions here. Well, where is the stop? stop the stop is always, uh, if we trade on, of course, we trade here on this particular strategy, one hour time frame. So the stop loss is above or below swing high or swing low on one hour time frame. So we just use M5 for, for entry, but we use one hour to target our particular price, take profit and stop loss. But you can also scout with this method. You can also scout with this method, try to practice it, because this can be very useful as a scouting system. So try to scout it and you can see the levels easily if you, you, I can spot it on just uh, naked, I, I don't need any indicators, but if you want indicators, I recommend one hour pivot points. It's IBF fix hourly pivot points, it's called. It prints out important levels on one hour time frame. So you can use it for scalping purposes. And if you trade intraday, then use, uh, use daily pivot points with daily stop losses 
and daily target price. If you scalp, use hourly pivots as always. And those hourly pivots usually coincide with swing highs and swing lows on one hour time frame. So stops are not that big. They can be really small, somewhere from 12 to 20 pips overall. Uh, Bogdan, basically for long-term strategies, we actually had a webinar, by the way, I think it was like two, three weeks ago maybe? Or right yes, yes. Those four are, weeks ago. I think there was some three or four weeks ago. Okay. So longer trading, longer time frames. Yeah, on swing trades. So um, there's a video on that. And let's see. Uh, not sure. I don't get Dayjohn's question here, to be honest, on the graph entry one, which is strictly there. Entry point, but not swing after that. Sorry, I don't get that. Um, there's someone, let's see. Yeah, that's about it, I guess, regarding the strategy for the moment, as far as I can see. Do you see, did I miss a question, T? I don't know. Don't yeah, think I so. don't know what, what sort of question. I can see the questions, but there are many, many questions, I think, which we have uh, responded already. Yeah, I think so. Who is responsible for stop running? So, yeah. And is the correct explanation of this practice related to large capitalized accounts breaking? Yes, of course. Of course, there are, you know, guys, when there are bank holidays, uh, those bank holidays are usually used for various stuff, stop hunts. So that is why I don't uh, trade on bank holidays. Because there are no banks to defend levels. So when USA on holidays, USA banks don't work, and there are no banks. There is no one to defend holidays, to defend levels. So stop hunts are very often realized on bank holiday days and on those uh, spikes when some big news is coming. Please present indicators for number two satisfied. Uh, indicators for this strategy is, are is simple. 34 EMA and 8 EMA. 34 is red, 8 is blue. You use 34 on one hour time, time frame uh, along with 8 EMA. When you switch to 5 minute time frame, you should only use 8 EMA and price action. So you wait for the price to break, first to retrace above if we want a short trade, then to break through this 8 EMA. If you want a long trade, you want the price to go below, then break through from below, from below above 8 EMA for long trade. So those are two. Now, there are no many indicators. I don't like complicated things. The simpler, the better, believe me. All righty. Let's take a look at, uh, maybe if everyone's okay with that, I think we can take a look at some other slides. Not sure this doesn't seem to fit though. <laughs> well, let me see. Um, sorry about that. That doesn't really fit the usual schedule, I think, of uh, what I wanted to show here. Well, anyhow, this is maybe just an example of the euro dollar for hour chart, for example, how we can define the trend on that time frame. That was the point of it. And uh, then if you would zoom into the one hour chart, you could use all kind of things to, to look within that tr trade or trend, sorry, uh, for breakouts, for example, like this, chart patterns, for continuations and fibs to trade in the direction of that trend. All right, that was the logic of those screenshots. All right, so um, just a bit, it's not a strategy, but it's more an explanation of market psychology, in my opinion, how I view it, at least. And uh, it's up to you if you see any merit in that, um, in that thinking, or you rather view the market differently. Everyone has to you know, consider your own psychology, trading psychology, and wonder if that's matched, and see if that's matched with the market psychology, and if that's in sync. This is how I basically look at the market. And uh, it's not really a trading methodology, 
Uh, it's more just really a view how the market structure is is in place and how it works and why the market does what it does. And it's basically, I always compare with a fingerprint, a human fingerprint. We all have fingerprints, but every fingerprint is different. And I think the Forex market is the same. Uh, the market makes similar movements, in, par in parenthesis, that's equal to the fingerprints, but the type of movements is always just a bit different. Just about that, difference there, that difference there. That's the uniqueness of the market and the, and the psychology behind all the participants of the market. And uh, that's why, in my opinion, you know, the, the, the trading it with discretionary, um, if done properly, should, in my opinion, be able to beat an automatic system just because we are better in, in, in seeing patterns uh, and seeing some differences in those patterns than any algorithm could, although uh, they might capture a certain market movement well for a certain time frame. Uh, they are maybe sometimes not adjustable to differences and changes which occur after time. Uh, so, you know, the solution to that could be, for example, to use different algorithms to compensate the, those changes. But, uh, so that's, that's my thing. So let's, let's dive into that. Uh, basically, the rhythm of the market, in my opinion, is always the impulsive and correctiveness of, of movements, right? The market is always making a rhythm of impulse, impulse, and, or impulse correction, correction, correction. And that sequence is highly dependent on you know, the market structure, uh, which you could maybe guess using, for example, a tool or yeah, a tool like Edit Wave, for example. So I know a lot of the a lot of traders don't like using Edit Waves, but all it does basically is just predict what comes next, impulse or corrective. Basically, that's all what it does, and um, and it's very core in my opinion. Um, so, but in any case, if you leave that. If you just set that aside, that's the rhythm of the market. And uh, the, basically the impulse is something that is a fast movement in a short period of time. And a correction is something that lasts long, uh, longer usually, and uh, is slower in movement. And usually an impulse would see, for example, candle closes very close near the, the low or the high, very near the extreme. You would see candle sticks that are of one direction. So if it's an uptrend, you would see mostly bullish candles within that impulsive move on a consistent basis with maybe just a small inside candles that are bearish or dojis. And uh, you should see bigger sized candles to the upside and smaller sized candles to the downside, if any. Corrective would have more of a mix. It would have a mixture of bullish and bearish, maybe 60, if it's, if it's correcting to the upside, maybe 60 bullish, 40 bearish. The closes will be not as near the extremes, will be more in the middle uh, and stuff like that, more slower up and downs. So the time factor is, is, a, is, a, is a very important element of that, in fact, because um, first of all, you can identify how, usually how long an impulse lasts. That's why it's very important what Tarantala said regarding the time factor of sessions and how long you know, it's, it's wise to stay in a trade. Because an impulse usually on an intraday level will really usually last maybe one to two hours. Uh, GU likes to move five times 15 minutes as far um, or it must have changed, but that's what I've noticed when I was trading it intraday, uh, roughly. And that's that impulse part of the session in a way. So what usually happens when you have an impulse in a, set, in, in a lower time frame, but it happens, you can use that principle on all time frames. Um, it's when you have an impulse, the lows or highs, so highs for the upside, would keep breaking, right? So you would have basically the five minute chart constantly making a higher high. And sometimes you'll have a pause for 10 minutes, but then within, a few candles, you will see a new high. And usually that impulse, so basically the price here in the impulsive part is moving away from the moving averages. All right, it's pulling away. If you even go to the one minute chart, you would see the, the, the candles price pulling away the moving averages. It's leading, you know, it's really like 
actively pulling it away. And that will continue until the moment that, for example, usually on intraday time frame, if something like 30 minutes, you don't get a higher high, that would be the moment where uh, you might be you know, in danger of starting that corrective phase. And what that means, the corrective phase is that the price is then going to actually, starting from the one minute, is going to correct back to the moving averages, basically. And that will, the one minute move back will translate to the five. The five minute correction will then translate back to the 50. And that's how it then translates to lower, to higher and higher time frames. All right. So that's just to give an idea when the, the, the real impulsive and corrective phases, you can have an idea when they end and start. The whole idea basically is that uh, you have these impulses and corrections, okay? And time factor is important with regard to how, f how much of an expectation is reasonable and when you can maybe get an idea when it's ending. When you do get a retracement back to the moving averages, for example, on the one hour chart, you see that the move is, the impulses to the downside, for example, is over and you get a correction to the upside. All right. Then, for example, you could move back to uh, to a higher time frame to use multiple time frame analysis to get a clue how far the correction could go, or you could uh, zoom in one time frame to actually catch the correction to the upside, which is risky. Not the correction necessarily that you need a lot of experience. That's how you can use those multiple time frames to either do the counter trend or wait for the bigger resistance levels on a higher time frame because you know that that impulse in the one hour is toast basically all right so you won't get any more with the trend or with the I think uh uh, we lost you, Chris. I cannot hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, definitely. Chris has some problems with his audio. I will. I now I sent him a message on Skype. I think that he will he will come. He will come back as 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 fast as he can so guys uh, this is all this is all very clear uh, basically what you do when you do a, a time a multiple time frame analysis you want all time frames to be in sync so if you spot let's talk about two systems which i present you if i if you spot a trend on one hour time frame you know that you can take an entry on five minute time frame but not at the close of uh, or uh, five minutes ten minutes prior to the close of the candle wait for the candle to close then enter in the first 15 minutes of that candle because then you will usually exploit the trend to its maximum or wait for example retracement but the tricky but the tricky thing is when you should exit. You always wait for your target price unless you you see that the price is bouncing off some important level of support and resistance. So that means that, for example, today, let's talk about today. You have taken a trade, let's say, around 29.80. And the price has gone to 29.70, and then you can see that the on that the, you just watch the price. For example, in next 10, 15 minutes, the the price is is bouncing off 70, 71, 72. Then it goes to 77, 78. Then again, it drops to 70, and that means that the price will try to break that 70 level for the second time for the second time uh, and if the price cannot break that in the next few minutes you close the trade so it's the safest option 
because if you put your stop loss to break even after 10 pips in these market condi conditions, usually uh, your uh, stop loss would be hit and that means that you will end up without any profit. But if you spot that uh, price is going through levels like uh, knife through butter, that means if on that example if the price has breached 29.70 and it goes to 29.60 and it easily breaks 29.60, it goes to 29.50, it bounces off a bit but then again 29.50 is broken, 29.49, 48, you see those are all indications that uh, there, are, there is a heavy momentum. Then you can try to exploit your target price to the maximum. So always, always uh, watch for that momentum. And if momentum is good, wait. If there is no momentum, you see that the price is bouncing off, it cannot break that particular level for 10 pips away from your entry. Then close it. I think that uh, it would, I think that the Chris has come back. Chris? Yeah, I'm back. I'm not, not sure if, uh, if others can hear me actually because, um, I don't know, I don't seem to be an organizer anymore when I came back now. I, uh, well, we had a question. Okay, after that, let let Chris finish. Then we can. If you don't mind, could you please once again just brief the two strategies? Yeah, I, I can go later. When Chris finishes, I will I will repeat it again briefly. No problem. Uh, the only thing is, what what do you see now? Uh, uh, we see every time frame has its impulsive part, which lasts a lot shorter than corrective part. That slide. Okay, and and now do you see a chart? No. There is still no. a slight uh, signal of continuation. The price is pulling moving averages apart. Okay, and now so I let's... can see both of us smiling. Actually, you are smiling. <laughs> I'm, I look serious in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the thing is that uh, I'm back. I guess I hope I hope that others can hear me. Can someone yeah. confirm that they hear me? <laughs> because I'm afraid you only can hear me. But <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm of so us can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, they can? Oh, okay. That's at least something. Uh, I'm going to ask, because somehow, do you have control? Because I think you have to, I don't have Me? any. I don't, have, I don't know. I'll ask. No, I don't have any control over the member. There is no presenter. Uh -huh. It says there is no presenter. Let's see. Change presenter. I will, uh, uh -huh. uh, Chris Warchik is presenter. Now you're a presenter, Chris. I, I think. Am? Oh yeah, absolutely yeah, indeed. Sorry no, about that, folks. Uh, no let's see. All right, we should be back. Oh, okay, so sorry about that. Somehow my internet connection dropped, but I'm back somehow. <laughs> so yeah, the, the you know the whole thing is you you get retracements, but the way the price moves back to those moving averages, back to to the to that uh, level, could be different. It could be sharp, it could be sideways. And the reason why it's moving back to moving averages is that no one wants to buy right at the low. So after in during an impulse, there's that drive, and every you know, the market is driving it lower, and everyone knows that a certain uh, level of time period, the market is pushing. So there's that willingness to drive it. But then after that impulsiveness is over, the willingness drops and we go into a corrective phase, uh, slow down, sideways, consolidation, so whatever you want to it, name it. And then the, there is no driver and basically then the market has the likelihood of reaching those moving averages where the willingness to maybe bring it down, you know, continuing the trend it has increases. Right? It does depend on other things, but uh, I'll dive into that just in a second. Um, so there's a certain time frame and number of pips it can move. It's a time price relationship. Here is a basically the black boxes are impulses, the red boxes are corrective parts and you can see that um, there are sometimes impulses within bigger consolidation zones like the euro pound fell massively but if you then zoom out it's a huge sideways zone. All right. So for example today but uh, you can see the black boxes are short. There are a few hours on this one hour time frame. It's a pound dollar one hour chart. And the sideways zones lasting usually much longer. 
So you don't want to get caught in those red zones. You preferably, as an intraday trader, want to trade those black zones, black boxes, because those reach the targets quicker and more securely. And this, this cycle will continue. Basically, there's a box here saying, OK, of impulse correction, impulsive correction, until basically you either hit a very major resistance or support level that changes the dynamics of the market. Or if you have divergences and you have wedges, falling wedges, rising wedges that indicate the end of that impulsiveness to one side. For example, here in the pound dollar, we were in a downtrend, a one hour, four hour world. But the day chart, if you would put a fib on the day chart still, there's a 786 fib right here somewhere of that entire move up, which is a support level. And uh, we made triple bottom more or less. And, you know, we, there's apparently that was the level where major support came in and you see a huge move up. So the definitely something's going on that is different of course than in this entire, entire move at the moment at least. So um, that is, you know, that continuous cycle kept on going here to the downside until maybe you reach a major level and then, you know, the market psychology could change. It could be a bigger retrace or a total reversal for a period of time. Here, um, so basically, as I said, two options. This is something we're saying for price to move across, uh, moving average or break out of a trend line. That's when usually what happens then is the price moves impulsively and you get a correction. And when you want to break out trade, you probably want a, a good structure that maybe hits the moving averages or you have a good trend line like this and then you get the break. All right? That's one way of trading it. Or if you fancy a bit more risk, then you could actually, and all factors are good to go, it's, that's a, you know, that's requires some analysis of higher time frames as well. You could take a sneaky, maybe shorts at uh, potential resistances when it hits the moving average, certain moving averages. Now that's definitely more risky and maybe FIB numbers. Definitely more risky, but then you could catch the turn. So that is definitely more risky. Um, so basically, the breakout is where you're trying to catch it when it moves away from the moving averages, but then you have to be on guard that the time factor is just going to uh, only last for a period of time. And if you catch the catching, like the, the turning spot, basically, then you have a bit. You have to be a bit more patient with the time factor because you could catch it just at you know the consolidation period, for example. So if you do it here, you can see there's a lot of stuff happening before you really get that fall. So let's see anything new here on this slide. So the reason why I'm talking about it is that what is an impulse on one time frame and then starts to be a correction on the other has impact on that time frame and then you can zoom out to see how that pattern fits within the larger time frame. That's, that's basically the idea. Or zoom in to see how that plays in as well. For example, if you have a four hour trend and you just finished, uh, you have a four hour trend and you're in a corrective huge consolidation zone. Uh, no wait, you have a up move, let me draw it. You have an up move on the four hour zone here and you have a big flag like this. Uh, if you zoom into the one hour chart, this is going to be a huge range, right? And if you zoom out to the day chart, uh, this is just going to look like a small pause, basically. That This is going to look like a small pause, basically. All right. So then you get more idea of how the correction and impulse mean on those different time frames, basically. Um, and you can analyze where those key support and resistances are and if they're basically strong enough to change that market structure, to change the trend and see if the rhythm of that impulse correct, correction is changing. And if it does change, what basically will happen is you will see, for example, a downtrend like this, all right, on the one hour chart, let's say, and on the one hour chart you, or 15 minute chart, you see suddenly an impulse and then correction and then a continuation to the impulse, and that turns into a one-hour impulse as well. Um, you know, maybe that market is 
the, the characteristics are changing, you would see the moving averages then slowly bending, all right? The psychology is changing. And when it uh, continues more like this and then hooks back to those moving averages and then bounces, for example, the right in here with this slow down move after an impulse, the and the moving average are pointing upwards, the whole psychology is bending then to the new direction. All right. So let's see, maybe here's an example. This was actually, uh, let's see, that was today? Yeah, that was today. <clears throat> I was talking to a trader and I was saying, we were looking at the Aussie, and he took it the same spot where I did, but luckily for him, he, he hanged on a lot longer to his target. I uh, really caught a, like a, what was it, like 45 pips on the Aussie. I knew that was the most impulsive move. Looking at the five-minute chart, I knew that it was cutting the highs, and if it wouldn't cut, that's why I wanted to get out, because that's when I was afraid that, well, not afraid, but I just wanted to catch the most impulsive part. I didn't want to live through any correction. So we got the correction, but we got some few falls more. That traded good for him. Got that, but <clears throat> today I was looking at, saying that you know, that's a really pretty good daily move, daily average. Here we are uh, not breaking ready for a while, so I was already giving a heads up. And after six candles, which was uh, somewhere here, I said I would take it off because we're going to get in a bigger correction and indeed it retraced even higher. It did fall and I think last I looked we were more like at almost double bottom. So it's not necessarily so that the whole upside is over, but we did get a substantial retrace in time. This was live, so not after the fact. And here too, on the euro, I said too, the impulse on the euro looks definitely, if we had six candles, it looks definitely you know, over, and that's what it was. We did get that big correction. Then it depends on the higher time frame, time frames to see <clears throat> basically if the bears can re regain control. At that, you know, in this point in time, bears were in control. But when the impulse part here was over, although it's still a downtrend, the bears didn't control it anymore here, to be honest. All right? it, no one maybe controlled it. It depends on the higher time frame. If after that up move, bears can regain it and push it back down. They did basically here. Right? Here we had an impulse, but we had a very weak retracement. It was a sideways move sideways retracement, which means that, what I mean is that, with that, is that price is going sideways and the moving averages are actually trying to catch up to price. So price hits the moving averages by going sideways and time, it's time factor that pushes the price just to moving averages. The other retracement possibility is an active one where price actively moves back to the moving averages. That was like this one here, great example where price actively moved, went back to moving averages and then found resistance for one more downside. And here it was passively and then found downside. And here uh, is another retrace, or well, in any case, that depends on the higher time fringe. And in fact, the euro eventually made it more to the upside. So the whole um, bearishness control was you know, temporarily lost. So that's that, basically the two charts I wanted to show you of the five-minute world. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. I lost my question box. Uh, someone is uh, asking uh, Martin, I think, uh, Chris, what moving averages do you use? I use primarily FIB number moving averages, and that uh, could really vary from all FIBs. It really depends. Uh, I, I like all of them. Maybe my favorite is 34. Um, but FIB numbers is really, you know, the, my main uh, main goal. Hey, JD is also asking when are range averages most useful to know, and how can these averages be integrated into the strategy? One more time, which moving averages are good to know? You said what are uh, they, or, uh, when are range averages most useful to know? And how can these averages be integrated into strategy? He pro he's probably asking, uh, <laughs> I don't know what range averages are. So how, no. can, how can your uh, moving averages, be, how they can be integrated into the strategy? 
basically how do you use how do you use those averages what's your system let's say. ah okay well it's it's to be honest i don't really use it for a particular uh strategy although i i know strategies regarding moving averages that uh, reflect very closely what uh, Tarantula is looking for basically price to cross moving averages first of all and or yeah that's basically what it was down to for a, a swing basically back to the moving averages and then a bounce of the after those moving averages back into the trend with a close below the moving averages a price to close you know I don't really use that nowadays that that frequently uh, but um, as in the past I use it now more just to measure uh, the, the psychology and the and the kind of the momentum more than ever. I use I use trend lines mostly nowadays. It's uh yeah, but it's definitely possible to use it that way. And uh, you can I use especially I look at how you know is the, the differences between the moving averages increasing? Um, is it widening? Right? Um, what is the angle of the moving averages? What is the relationship between the moving average, the price relationship to the moving average? So there are a lot of factors to look at. I'm not looking at all time frames at all these things, but um, so that's. But I try to use that to measure the psychology on different time frames and see if uh, you know what is the what's going on there. I use more or less for real for trading itself. The tools are what I use are awesome oscillator, trend lines, price action candlesticks, chart patterns. But I do have moving averages just to get the sentiment, basically. And if I wanted to, I could use those strategies, but I don't use them. So that's it. <laughs> Sorry for the long answer. I don't, anything else? Or you want to take, walk us through the uh, strategy still? The range average, the range average question is referring to. Uh, okay, it's okay. I, daily range average. I will I will read you how it how it is written. Daily range range average over, for example, a fourteen day period is what the range average question is referring to. Strange. I I don't understand this. Mm. Daily range average over, for example, a fourteen day period is what the range average question is referring to. Ah, well, so if you have a fourteen a, average a, fourteen ATR, uh, uh, JD, please formulate your question again. Uh, another question: uh, What number SMA or EMA are on this chart? This chart, ooh, this is probably because I don't see it here, and it's a screenshot. So it's probably a thirty-four EMA, and I think a twelve EMA. Okay, and uh, do you know what the ATR is? ATR is average true range, JD, average true range. Is buying the same currency in different directions, I mean buy and sell a valid strategy? No, that's not a valid strategy. That, that is, why, why do you use your stop loss if you hedge? For me, it's not a valid strategy. It's called hedging. And I don't know how to deal with hedge. I, that, that's why I use stop loss. Why should I hedge when I use stop loss? I don't see the point. Uh, no problem. Uh, so, uh, uh, JD, you, if you can formulate your question again, and I will go through recapping of my strategies if you don't mind. So. Chris, you can show the slide of uh, first strategy, and I will go to OK. This is strategy number one. So, 5 EMA, 11 EMA indicators, stochastic 833, RSI 11, and MACD 1269. Traditional MACD, which is already built into your MT4 platform. So. First, we take a look on 4-hour chart to determine the trend. So, we look on 4-hour chart. Then, if we see that 5 EMA is above 11 EMA, that stochastics are heading up, 
and RSI is above 50, then we know that there is there should be a long setup. For long setup, we zoom into 15 minute time frame. So, uh, switch to the next slide, and there there is a four hour time frame. We can see that there was a period of consolidation. How can we know that there is a period of consolidation? We can we can see that, that this is an uptrend. Uh, first, by price action, we see that the, the price is making higher highs and higher lows. We also see that the RSI is above 50. We also can see that even MACD is above zero, but we don't use MACD on four hour. We just use it in 15 minutes. So we can see that this is a consolidation on a bullish run. So uh, blue and red, blue and red EMAs are uh, horizontally aligned. So this is where those blue and red EMAs are just to the left of this red line. So those are aligned horizontally. They are sitting just at top of each other. You see, no, no, they are aligned horizontally. They are going uh, just that, that is horizontally aligned. And then we can see some sort of divergence. Blue is going above red, and we can see that that is the place that we can try to search up for entries. So after this consolidation here, this is the mark of consolidation, we can see that the price is going upside. We also, yes, we also can see that the, that the moving average are heading up. We can see that the RSI is above 50 and we can, you see the period of consolidation. Then you see RSI is above 50, stochastics are heading up and we can then switch to 15 minute time frame to see our entry, to look for our entry. Now we can see that uh, the price is indeed uh, looks bullish, but we need to wait for uh, retracement. So after this, this red line, we wait, that is a uh, four hour close, we wait for the price to retrace to at least blue, to at least blue, blue uh, EMA. But we prefer to retrace to red EMA. So it's best to retrace to red EMA. So the price is retracing back and we can see at the fourth candle to the right of this vertical red line, we found our entry. But we also check RSI, it's above 50, stochastics are heading up and MACD is going up. It, it doesn't have to be above zero. It can be below zero, but histograms should be increasing. So it doesn't matter if MACD is above or below zero as long as MACD histograms are increasing. So in this particular example, we can see the MACD is above zero, histograms are increasing indeed, and the stochastics are heading up, also RSI is above 50. So that is our entry, four candle, of, uh, four candle to the to the right of this red uh, horizon, this red horizontal vertical, sorry, red vertical line. So, uh, JD, just uh, let me finish with the recap, and uh, we will answer your question. Okay. So, 50 pips is the maximum we could have gained on this particular entry because the price was bullish. Stop loss is below. If we go on four-hour time frame, we don't play stop loss below four hour. We place it on the last swing low on 15 minutes time frame for this long setup. So stop should be placed this should be placed just below this swing low to the left of this horizontal line. So that is uh, for this strategy. And for next strategy, we can use uh, next slide. So strategy number two, we have two indicators, eight and 34 EMA. Setup chart is one hour and trigger chart is M5 or M15, but I prefer M5 because this is one hour time frame. So we analyze the trend by watching the price. If price is above 8 and 34 EMA, the trend is bullish. Okay, the price should be above 8 and 34, not the moving averages. We, weigh, we want the price to be above 8 and 34 on one hour time frame. Then we zoom into lower time frame and find the place when price crosses over 8 EMA. So 
we zoom into five minute time frame and we wait for the price to cross. So this is one hour. You can see that the price is indeed below red and uh, blue and the price is retracing. Then when price has started to retrace, in, you see the red uh, vertical line. That is the place where price is retracing. Here is the that same line marked on five minute time frame. And then when we spot the retracement, we wait for the price to retrace back up, then break through this eight EMA on five minute time frame. So first we wait for retracement to the upside. There was the retracement to the upside. And after that the price broke to this uh, ATMA and that is when we take, that is the place where we should take our entry, when she, we, we should consider our entry. We don't trade on leaving candle, we wait for the candle to close prior to our entry. So in this particular trading strategy we don't enter on leaving candle. That, then the second entry, as you can see the price is perfectly retracing. It doesn't, it doesn't go through this ATMA, it's just perfectly retracing up. And then when price has finished our retrace, we can see that the price broke to this uh, 8 EMA and we want to short this just at the close of this 5 minute candle. So you can see that the price has perfectly retraced and there we can take our entry, place our stop just above this swing high and go for a short position. So that is in short the recap of those two trading strategies. Uh, now, Chris, there is. A, can you see the JD's question now? I think that Chris has lost sound again. No, unfortunately, I don't see. Huh? I don't. Okay. No, no, I'm the here. Question is, unfortunately, is it, you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Is it not true okay. that if we know what the average true range is, we can determine the extent to which the market we can reach a maximum level of growth? within any average period of time, 14 days. Yes, uh, mostly JD, that is true. For example, if I see that ATR is 70 pips and the price has almost reached its full ATR, I don't trade. I can only trade if I see or if I sense that that particular day the price will break through that average ATR because there were some big news for example, NFP stress test or uh, bid rate announcement. So then we can tra uh, take into consider consideration, uh, uh, we can nullify that ATR. So we can try to take a full extent of the trend. So usually, usually uh, there is particular level of growth, of growth when ATR is full. So we can determine that, mostly we can determine that. And 14 days is okay. That is the answer, uh, JD. Yeah, no problem. So guys, I, I don't think, if you have any further question you can ask us because we need to finish this. We have gone through our time limit. Right, Chris, it's almost 8.30. Yeah. No, it's 7.30, yeah. 7:30, yeah. yeah, I have dinner. Soon indeed. <laughs> so, uh, uh, profit, uh -huh. move, uh, okay, okay. I think every average trader can make profit on big move trend. Move the uh, question is how do you do profit in low volatile days or when the price goes sideways? I scalp. I scalp. I scalp on one minute time frame. So, when there is a low volatile day or when the price goes sideways, I usually scalp on one minute or five minutes time frame using hourly pivot points. So that is the answer. When uh, there is a low volatile day, I scalp. 5, 10, 15 pips, goodbye. I don't trade. Excellent overview of all the strategies. Thank you. Thank you, JD. So guys, uh, as always, uh, wait for our webinars. We will be having a lot more interesting webinars to take you through. Uh, also, guys, uh, follow Chris intraday live trading. Follow my analysis. I also started doing uh, novice webinars. So I'm talking about uh, forex beginners. For uh, I'm talking uh, about forex beginners. So you can 
join also my webinars on Monday where I explain uh, known and unknown facts of Forex market. So it could be interesting for, of course, for Forex novice traders and for some maybe more experience so you can attend if you want. Awesome. Uh, and uh, all of these webinars are being recorded, guys. So you can you can uh, you can go to Admiral Markets website and thanks Admiral Markets for for recording uh, our webinars and for support. So you can uh, go to Admiral Markets website and you can find all of our webinars there. Uh, Monday, what hour? It's six six uh, Central Time. So when me and Chris start, usually it's the time when I also start. So it's Chris. 6, 6 uh, GM, 6 uh, Central Time. Absolutely. Next week we'll just have a web, our usual webinar again on Thursday, like always. Yeah. Same time, same place. Yep. And, uh, so, guys, it. take care. Also, don't forget to like uh, Admiral Mike's webpage. They are supporting us and you, of course. And uh, be sure to be very careful. Today and uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow because tomorrow we have big news. Also uh, on Friday is NFP, so don't rush into any trades. If you want to trade NFP, try our demo strategy. Try to demo our strategy that we present you a couple of months ago. Yeah, sounds great. So we wish you. Great trading, and if you don't trade, that's maybe even better <laughs> in a way. Uh, in that case, great days and weekend, and uh, see you all soon. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, see you soon, guys. Take care. Cheers.